Amen. Thank you, Rodney. Hey, continue to invite friends to join us. We have some six, seven hundred people now online with us. We're anticipating that to grow, and we hope so. We're on YouTube as well, but you can connect uh, there on Facebook. So how amazing has it been that God would lead us before the outbreak to uh, enter into this season to say, let's practice the way of Jesus. And we have the opportunity to practice this non-anxious presence of Jesus and to be his light, to be salt and light in the world. And, you know, in a, in a time like this, um, it's true, with a lot of panic and a lot of anxiety, we need to bring our collective anxieties and energy towards worshiping the Lord. Uh, it's also true at a time like this that our cultural systems, uh, when they're overloaded, uh, it's most often the, the most vulnerable, the weakest, most vulnerable among us who, who really uh, take the, 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 the major brunt of that kind of uh, challenge. And so we're going to be the church. And so you'll hear opportunities that we have to bless some folks if kids are out of school or some of our friends that may not uh, have meals and such. We're going to be looking at opportunities there. We're going to be connecting with you throughout the week. Uh, and you'll see that on uh, Wednesday night, even we're at seven o'clock, we're going to come back together and we've got a word about prayer, which is our focus. How about that? Throughout this coming week, we said throughout this series that practicing the way of Jesus means that we're going to enter into what we call this subversive countercultural act of resistance and restraint. We're practicing restraint. It's almost like a God has forced us into solitude. We've talked about that as well. We've said that the beginning of practicing the way of Jesus, the whole life of a believer is one of submission. So our first week was we talked about submission and we, we memorized James 4, 7. It says this, you can say this with me, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. A lot of times, you know, we need to be acknowledging the fact that we have an evil one working against us. You know, we can't, we can't direct our, our, our circumstances, but we can certainly guide and lead our own uh, lives in terms of how we respond to the things that come our way. And so even as, as we have seen an unplanned, you know, direction in our lives and plans, again, that have been thwarted or changed, God is sovereign and even in the midst of our anxieties, it forces us to reckon with our own personal anxieties. And so I hope that you'll do that this week, to get underneath some of the emotions that you have. We've said it before, our deepest emotions um, point us to our idols. And so if you sense some fear or anger, some anxiety or worry, get underneath that. Allow the Spirit to speak into your heart as you submit your plans to Him. Well, we talked last week about solitude. How about that? That the Lord would lead us into moments of quiet with him. We memorized uh, uh, Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Some of you are going to have some real still, quiet moments. Many of you not working this week. Again, a real spring break. Now, some of you with kids at home, you're saying, man, I wish I had a break, right? But I hope that, that this will be a week that your children will look back on as one of the sweetest times you've ever known in your family's experience. That we'd look back and say, man, we got off our screens for a bit. We, we actually engaged one another. We were together with the closest, our closest friends or, or our closest uh, loved ones. And I want to encourage us too, children and kids, I want you to reach out. It's a good time to reach out to those who are perhaps elderly. I know some are, some are almost sequestered in some of our uh, nursing homes and other places. They're saying that even visitors from the outside can't come in. So I want to encourage all of us, uh, children, uh, listen, reach out to your grandparents. Reach out to some older folks in your life. It would mean the world to them to just call. And how about this? You're, if you're on a break this week, you got time, right? Talk to your grandparents. I mean, like on the phone. Don't text them, but like talk to them. If you can visit them, do so. But talk to some folks. Talk for an hour. Just waste time. It won't be wasted. Just spend time talking with those that you love the most. We have such an opportunity here, gang. We have an opportunity to use new platforms, new possibilities. But again, I want us to return to just old fashioned checking in, checking on each other. Many of us in our church do that well. But all of our connect groups and then all of our friends, our neighbors, let's check on each other during this time. 
And let's bless each other. Let's love each other well. Today what I'm going to do, I, I wanna, I'm going to go off script a little bit and talk about the way of Jesus in the midst of crisis. So if you'll turn in your Bible, go ahead and grab one if you need to get up now and grab your Bible. Um, Mark chapter 4, uh, we're going we're gonna to go there and look at a passage of Scripture. And we're going to talk about what it is to follow the way of Jesus in the midst of crisis. So in, in Mark chapter 4, uh, we have Jesus... You may know this, this uh, experience here. He's, he's with his disciples. He's going to be on the Sea of Galilee here. So watch this. Mark chapter 4, it says in verse 35, on that day, okay, and we noted last week, if you were with us, in Mark, it's kind of immediately, there's always action. It keeps moving, keeps moving. And on that day, uh, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go, let, let, let us go across the, the other, to the other side. And leaving the crowd, so remember we talked about this last week, if you're with us, but if not, we, we talked about solitude, that place of solitude and quiet, stillness and silence. Jesus modeled this for us, and now we have the opportunity. I want to challenge you. I'm going to spend extended time in solitude and prayer, praying for God to move in these days, praying for personal renewal. I'm praying for corporate renewal in his church during this time. I'm praying for corporate renewal to go viral, which then becomes revival in a city, in a country, in the world. Could it be that in unexpected ways, God is going to move in our nation and in the world in our day? Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for this viral to, virus to end, but let's pray for our love and his grace, his glory to go viral into the world as we worship him with our lives. This week, we get a chance to, to, to go away into that quiet place. Uh, it's called the Eremos. We talked about this last week. It's, it's a Greek word for wilderness, solitary place. You're going to find opportunities like never before to slow down and re be reminded. You're not defined by what you do. You're not defined by your job. You're not defined by how much people need you, how much you're able to accomplish, not by what you produce. You're defined by God and him alone. This is always true. But now many of us are forced into that posture, and it is going to be a challenging time for some of us. But just rest in him. Just say, Lord, you're enough for me. You are enough. So Jesus says, hey, let's go to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with them. So imagine this. They're going across. These are in the synoptic gospels. So we know they're going across the Sea of Galilee here. All the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all tell this story. So we know more than what Mark lays out for us here. Look at verse 37. Hope you're following along with me here. And a great windstorm arose. A great windstorm came out of nowhere. And the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already Already filling, filling up with water. But he was in the stern. Jesus was in the stern asleep on the cushion. Now think about this. Even in this cultural moment, out of nowhere, a windstorm takes place. Now we, we consider these, in my lifetime, unprecedented moments. And yet we know it wasn't long ago we saw the SARS you know, pandemic that, that took even, even more lives uh, in our nation thus far. And we, we, we saw back in the day, there was the bubonic plague. I was reading about Martin Luther speaking into that, where, where nearly half, uh, half of all of Europe died during, during the Black Death. Even uh, what took place uh, later in, in times like the, the atomic, uh, you know, uh, atomic era, when, when, when the atomic bomb was invented, many people in Europe, I read about C.S. Lewis saying, hey, you know what? Uh, we're all going to die, essentially, one way or the other. Let's prepare for eternity, but let's not, let us not live in fear. And now we need to come back to the word of God constantly. Remember, these are not unprecedented days. But I praise him that we have the opportunity to stay connected, to stay with one another, encouraging each other in new, even technological ways. So let's continue to do that. But a windstorm, just as we've seen in our day, has come out of nowhere. But watch this. Jesus is just, he's just chilling. He's resting as if to say, I've got this under control. While the storm is all around us, he is there. He's the cornerstone. He is our foundation. 
And he is resting and he invites us in. So look at what, it, look at what happens. And they woke him. They woke him up. Some of you might be one of shaking, shaking the Lord. Come on, wake up. What's going on? Wake up. And they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Do you not care? Now, some of us, we may not say it, but we're prone to go there. I know many skeptics during this time would say, see, look at this. There's no God in control of the universe. How could a loving God allow this kind of thing to happen? Well, God is on his throne. And he's at work even in this time. But maybe you have been like me. Lord, do you not care about, you know, I had some plans. I mean, I really, I was looking forward to a spring break. That's not happening. And many of you, you had plans that have been changed. I think of many things that are even upcoming, even weeks, months from now, have been canceled on my calendar already that I was really looking forward to. Lord, do you not care? I mean, some of you, if you're like me, it's like, uh, do you not care that like March, March Madness is not happening? Are you kidding me? But some of us, Lord, do you not care that the stock market, you know, or my finances are going south or whatever that might look, look for us? You know, uh, some of us, this is a very, very serious time. I mean, all of us in varying degrees. But this, again, allows us to step back and say, where do I place my trust? Is my trust in him or is my trust in all that I am investing in? Is it in my production? Is it in my secure future that I've made for myself? It's a time to reckon with our own anxieties and our own idols. It's a time for the Lord to speak into our hearts. And we can say to him, Lord, we trust in you and we trust in you alone. So continue to turn to him in these days. Look at verse 39. And he awoke and rebuked the wind. So he woke up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace. That's the word, right? That's what we need more than anything right now. Peace. I love the C.S. Lewis line. He says that, you know, peace and happiness do not exist apart from God. Uh, because apart from him, it, it, it does not exist. We've got to come to him. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Check this out. He says, come to me. You've got to come to him to receive it. In all that has happened in this time, in these days, let me ask you, have you prayed? Have you come to him and say, Lord, give me peace? Because, friend, you won't find it apart from him. It does not exist. And so we keep turning to him. Lord, give me peace in these anxious days. Peace, be still. Praise the Lord. Look at this. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. Be reminded, friends, this is the God who is over all creation. He has power over the storms in your life. He has power over this virus. He has power over all things on this planet. He's at work. We just turn to him. Say, Lord, move among us. Look at verse 40. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? What a powerful question. Have, have you still no faith? He's asking us. He, he is asking me. He's asking each of us. Hey, why are you so afraid? You probably know. The most common command in all of scripture, fear not. Why? That's most often added then behind that, because I am with you. Don't be afraid. Friend, if you're afraid today, come in close, come to the Lord, and he will give you strength and courage in this time. Why are you afraid, he says. And they were filled, look at this, with great fear and said to one another, who, who, who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Now, now look at this. Jesus says, now, are you, are you still afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, think about this question. Had Jesus ever done anything that would cause them to question his presence and his work in their lives? Let me ask you this question. Has Jesus ever... Has he ever let you down before? Has there ever been a time when you, said, when you said, Jesus, you just didn't come through for me? He says, why are you afraid? I've proven myself faithful. We're going to sing in just a moment. We're going to sing it as well. We're going to sing songs that we can all join in. We're going to sing he's the cornerstone. And I want you to just stay with us and just worship. Don't run off. Stay focused. You got nothing else to do today. 
In fact, I hope some of you are at home just sitting in your pajamas. It's a great pajama day. Great day to worship the Lord. So let's stay in. We're going to close our time with some uh, just prayer together at the end. So continue to stay focused. But I want you to see this. Here's as I close. I want you to hear this. It says here that, that they, they then, great fear, mega fear, is now shifted. And they're saying, who is this? Who is this? They'd been with Jesus. They'd been with him for some time by this point. Even the wind and the sea obey him. You see, their, their, their fear had shifted. How about this? You know this. Fear, reverence, awe of the storm had them shaking, scared to death even for their lives. Some of us have been concerned for our lives, and some of us should be. Some of us who are vulnerable, and some of the elder among us and, and more vulnerable for, among us, we, we should be concerned, and we should do all we can to care for others around us. This is why we're not gathering together. It's why we're going to have a hard time not being together you know, this week and with our loved ones, perhaps. But let me, let me show you what's happened here. They turn their attention then to Jesus and say, oh, my gosh. Now their fear, if you will, their reverence, their awe turns to Jesus. So what, what shifted here? Their awe in the storm, their fear of the storm, their focus is the one thing that changed. Not their circumstances, though Jesus stepped into that, but the fact that they recognized they could focus on him and he's got everything under control. You can do the same. So turn your fear, your focus on all the things that are making you anxious, the fears that you have, turn your focus to him. And in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, thank him. Thank him for the fact that he is with us always. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. The, the peace of God that surpasses your understanding. Well, guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Guard what you feel. Guard what you think. Let his presence, let his word, let his truth guide and lead us. And so I hope that our families, our kids will remember this time as one of the greatest times in, in your family's history. As we look back and say, wow, what a special time it was for us to gather in prayer, to be together, to not worry in a time that seems so anxious. Hey, read the Bible together. Read stories to your children. Read the scriptures out loud. Pray together. Find yourself on your knees, even, even here this morning, as you worship with us. Whatever posture you want to take, you know, we can come before him now. Sing like nobody's listening. <laughs> if you're alone or with family, dance like nobody's watching. And just worship him together. Let this be kind of a quarantine Bible read, a, a worship time together. And let's connect with each other in our groups. Let's continue to reach out. Uh, via the phone or email, however we can. Let's care for each other and let's be the church in these days. We're going to give you some opportunities as we move forward. We're going to talk. We'll connect with you each day on our social media platforms. And we're going to be again together on, on uh, Wednesday night at 7. So here's our verse for the week. I want you to memorize this verse with me. Psalm 66, verse 20. You can see it on the screen there. Let's say it together. Blessed be God. Because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. He has not rejected us. We bless him. We praise him. May this be our finest hour, friends. May we turn to him as we worship him. We're going to focus on prayer this week. What an opportunity we have to pray like never before. I hope you'll have seasons of prayer, moments of prayer. Maybe the longest moments of prayer you've ever had in your life. Pray for an hour. Pray for two hours this week. And let's remember, he is the cornerstone. Whatever storms come our way, he is the one who's guiding and leading our lives. Let's trust in him. Now, if you're watching, I want to give you a chance to come to our Savior. If you don't know Jesus and you're wondering, is there a time when you've ever you know, really given your heart to him? Have you ever submitted your life to him? Now's the time. So I want to just lead you in a prayer. I believe by God's sovereignty, this is your moment. Pray for your friends, pray for family. But right now, if you need to receive Christ, join me. Let's pray together. Others of you, pray with me, pray for me. Pray for these people watching. Lord, we know there's coming a day when we will all leave this life. And all that will matter is what we have done with you. 
You've told us in your word that it's destined for every person to die and then to face judgment. Judgment on what we've done with you. Whether we've received your grace or not, because we can't be good enough. We can't get to heaven on our own. And so, friend, if you've never asked Jesus in your heart, I want you to do that now. Just say, Lord, come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my punishment upon yourself. Thank you for dying so that I wouldn't have to die. Regardless of what comes my way, I can live for eternity. Give him your heart now. And perhaps all of us, even with palms up, say, Lord, whatever you have for me, I receive it this week. I just rest in you. I trust in you. Lord, we give you our lives. We love you. We sing to you, our cornerstone, our Savior, our King, our peace. We pray.